us yeah. today, and you were trying to bully us, but you came unprepared and you're out. I'm trying to think of. Numbers, it's an even match now. I'm trying to think of something else that's like half British, half American that we could sort of like make our mascot for this one. Uh, John Barrowman from Doctor Who. Oh, I I love him. Oh, I he's cool. His butt once. Okay. <laughs> We're starting strong. That's a story and a half. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Okay. Actually, no. Expand on that for a second. I need some water story. anyway. No. It's, he yeah. Was, he was. Yeah. I feel like we need Comic to hear more. I got a photo opportunity of them. I politely asked if I could touch his butt. He said, "Sure." Like it's not a fun story. I just it was normal. That is a fun encounter. story. <laughs> I love how there's two British people in this podcast, and I mean, neither of us have touched his butt. Like you know. This is crazy. Uh, John Barrowman, if you're listening to this, I hope you were okay with that. I, mean, I asked your permission, so you probably were. And also, John Barrowman, if you're <laughs> listening to this, could you please like retweet this or something, just so we can get some <laughs> get the numbers up? Um, all right, so <laughs> yeah, if you don't get the numbers up, there are you for it. Yeah, um, oh, better numbers. Yeah, everyone, I'm I'm struggling here. Um, if you guys could just sort of reach out to, you know, go to your neighbors next door, maybe do some door knocking, some phone banking to get this podcast out there, um, it would really benefit me a lot, personally. Um, but, yeah. So, anyway, uh, I want everyone to close your eyes for a second and just, like, wait. Feel, feel the wind there? That's right. We're already in the podcast. Open your eyes. Nice. <laughs> okay, you guys should say some things so I know you're still there. <laughs> well, you you just made the situation so peaceful. Yeah, you're right. Hello. Yeah. I, didn't know what I was, right. was yeah, meditating to recover my HP. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Game Busters. This is a podcast from GameLuster.com. If you are new here, what we do every week is we do a little deep dive into a game that we love or don't love or perhaps have mixed feelings on, uh, but we just really try to look back on it with a positive attitude, do a little retrospective analysis, and just, I know everything's horrible outside the window, just cl close the window right now, just hang out with us for a minute, and we're going to be chill. So I am Nirav, and I'm going to be your host today. Uh, welcome to uh, Game Busters, the half British, American British combo edition. Uh, we are going to be serving uh, hamburgers. But also, uh, what do you guys have over there? Scones? We have scones here. Fish, fish and chips? Yeah. <laughs> we have what, are we, what are the different foods <laughs> that you have? They have much better chocolate uh, than we do. That's fair. That is true. That well, is true. Okay, um, so I just want to make sure you guys know, Cadbury. they sell Cadbury stuff over here too. Like, it's the same stuff. Does it taste the same though? I've, I've... There's Cadbury stuff in yeah. every grocery really, store. Like, been, though, you know, never the seen Cadbury it. cream eggs in America definitely use a different recipe because I've had okay, better Cadbury enough. cream eggs in London. They definitely might. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's jump into it. Today we're going to be, uh, e let's ease into this. So I want to just hear everybody, what was your first uh, Zelda game and what kind of got you into trying it uh, in the first place? Uh, Ree, why don't you kick us off? I think... Yeah, sure, okay. Um, my first one uh, was, this is just going to prove that I'm the Zoomer of the podcast. I started on um, Ocarina of Time, but on the GameCube, that version. Um, I'm actually more of a Zoomer, and... but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yours, oh, I think I know what your one is, actually. But yeah, okay, so Ocarina of Time, um, it came with my GameCube. And what got me into it, and I'll probably bring like be mentioning this throughout the podcast, um, was just how mysterious it was. Like I've never dived into the lore of Zelda, but I played so much Ocarina of Time, and it's just something about the art style that just draws me in. I like games where I feel like I don't fully understand what's going on, and that was the first game I played ever where I felt like, um, you know, I felt very alone in the game that makes sense because in ocarina of time so many people are against you you feel so confused by the world around you and it's just such it's just so interesting and intriguing and i really like the premise of it and i still like it to this day um can't wait to go and talk about the main game of today yeah. so i can talk you know, so you guys can convince me to play it based on my love of ocarina of time yeah uh definitely okay uh kate how about you so mine was also Ocarina of Time, but my Iron. circumstances were very different, and I'm going to get in so much trouble for admitting this, like, publicly on a podcast, but 
when I was in middle school, I don't know who started it to this day, but someone in our grade got a flash drive with an emulator and an Ocarina of Time ROM on it and just started passing it around the grade. And it like just a joint. Thing. Yeah, it was just like <laughs> this thing that suddenly everyone in the school had and you played it because it was like the cool thing to do and that's how I ended up doing it. God. And then later in the year, someone, presumably the same person, did it again with Majora's Mask and that's how I got into Zelda. God. <laughs> now, I'm going to support you on that because... Um... I think there's nothing wrong with uh, emulating Nintendo games. Sorry, Nintendo, if you're listening to this, but you know they're not they're not the best at re-releasing their consoles. Yeah. Re- you, they just <laughs> they just issued a DMCA takedown on this podcast. <laughs> I mean, they... yeah. worth it. I mean, they're selling yeah, and sixty. You know what? I pre-ordered two of them, right and I'm glad so. I did. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, I bought it. So one yeah, as well. take that, Nintendo. <laughs> And somehow, uh, even though we're not talking about his games, it was Todd Howard who issued the takedown. Oh my god. Uh, Alright, uh, Luke, He's how everywhere. about you? So I had barely had any experience with Zelda before Breath of the Wild. I had played, like, some of them, but I, don't, I I can't say I put more than an hour into any uh, any Zelda game other than maybe I played a bunch of A Link Between Worlds on 3DS. But I don't think I got very far into it I because also I just got stuck, got stuck and then worlds. never went back to it. <laughs> so, so Breath of the Wild is the Zelda I've played wow. the most. Because uh, it's the so yeah, we, I've uh, I'll go ahead and throw in. So like I have been playing Nintendo games like relentlessly since I was a, a wee babe, but I never played Zelda growing up. Don't know why. It just never attracted my attention. None of my friends were playing it. No one ever really mentioned it to me. It was always this weird foreign thing I never knew about. Um. I was pretty much on Mar like if some if if a game didn't have Mario or Sonic or Pikachu in it, I don't think I played it pretty much before college. Um, but uh, when I got to college and I took the Wii with me from home, I kind of just looked at it one day and was like, "Are there other video games? Maybe." And I went over to GameStop and I just like kind of looked around and I was like, "What is good for the Nintendo Wii system?" <laughs> and they're like, I mean, Skyward Sword, the new Zelda game just came out, and I was like, it sounds like a great time to get into it. Um, and that was, yeah, that was the very first Zelda game I played with Skyward Sword when I was in college. Um, oh, and what, what one to start on? I yeah, think. it's it was. God, I, I can't imagine that's many people's first one. I, I, and I loved it. Um, I, I mean, I can't even like express like that. That game really does. I, I do see a lot of its flaws, and of course, the motion controls are a problem, but. Like, when I when I first stepped into that, and that being my first exposure to Zelda, like, to me, it was like, oh, man, I've, like, stepped into, like, a Studio Ghibli movie. And, like, that was sort of my takeaway, and Skyward Sword really, like, hooked me till the end. And so, like, it's not one of the best Zeldas, for sure, but it just really has a special place in my heart. And, you know, from then on, I, I went back and I played... I, I've at least dabbled in every single one of the games now. Um, I've completed most of them, but... My, I famously have not finished Ocarina of Time. I'm just, I'm really near the end and I don't like it. <laughs> I'm. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. I just simped over Ocarina of Time so hard, but despite that, despite the hours I poured into it, never finished it. It's, it's sad because like Ocarina of Time is really solid like game design, but like just with controls and camera, it just hasn't aged well and yeah. it's very hard to play right oh, now. God. Um, yeah. it's, it's. I have the Ooh, same feelings towards that's... Kingdom Hearts 1. Oh, man. I just quit. You're not missing a lot. I could not be bothered with the uh... last level at the end of the world. That bit just made... That bit just... That level just broke me. I gave up. I was like, I put All so right. much time well, in let's, I uh, be let's move anymore. on into the Hall of Fame luster, everybody. Um, I think since both of you have been here, we've actually built up quite a lot. We have two walls now. Um, you it's can see the velvet nice. rope and yeah. carpet is still here leading in up these marble chiseled steps. Um, and then when you get up there, it is two walls. No, No roof yet. But if you want to um, take a look, we now have pedestals displaying all of the previous winners, so that's pretty good. Um, and are we going to get? Are we going to get a ceiling at some that's, point? Do you think? I, I hear that comes last. I'm not a hunt. Oh, I, I'm not like a builder person. What are they called? Architect. <laughs> but <laughs> Minecraft player. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a mine, I'm not a pro Minecrafter. But I, I think I think ceiling comes last. I'm actually not 100 percent sure now that I'm saying that. <laughs> Does, does this, <laughs> if any architects are out there listening, could you uh, send us an email um, and just tell us, do does the ceiling come at the end, or is that somewhere in the middle? I know it's not first. Um, 
All right. I mean, give, given what we've got in the Hall of Fame luster, I feel like would be an architect's nightmare. There's a lot of variety going on there. Regard, yeah. Uh, regardless, I mean, don't we have an entire totem in there? How are we going to get a ceiling that covers that thing? That thing is tall. It is. It is big. Um, I think that we are uh, gonna have to make it a multi-story affair, or it might just be like an airplane hangar. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, because, well, it might need to be pretty big, because today we're actually going to be fitting in the scariest Zelda monster. Um, I, I want this to sort of be a, a wide net for us, so really anything from Zelda you'd consider a monster, um, that scares you the most. Uh, so, yeah, let's, let's, uh, bring it in. Uh, Kate, why don't you kick us off? No, I want to hear yours first, because you were, you were hinting that you had a really good one. Oh, okay, I know, but I wanted to save it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll kick us off, that's fine. Um, if everyone remembers from The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, there is a, um, I don't really know how else to say this, a small chicken man? Um, <laughs> oh, his name is Uka. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I, by yeah. the way, I want everyone to know I had to Google it, and I Googled Twilight Princess Chicken Man, and it, it came up right away. Um, <laughs> nice. But, yeah, oh, the, the thing I'm describing is, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's O-O-C-C-A, Uka, just pull it up. It's, um, it's sort of a chicken, I guess more of a chicken woman, because it does have sort of oh my. breasts, um, oh, many a, breasts, that actually. That is a big pig. That is, te- that is terrifying. I don't like this. Christ. I don't like the yeah. things I'm getting in my head and, already. And this, this is Zelda, yeah? Yeah. I, and oh my! I don't remember it being that scary. <laughs> the weird thing is that Uka like live. She she lives in your pocket. Like she stays with you for the journey, conceivably. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. And oh, uh, no. you just kind of pull her out to leave uh, to leave dungeons and come back to them. And I don't. I guess she's like sort of the rudimentary form of fast travel. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't. Well, I'm sorry, but can we just stop? Why does she have tits? She has, so she has eight of them. I want everyone to know. Um, uh, I, I don't like this image I'm getting in my head. Make sure you look at the HD version. Um, no. Oh, no. So, no. that's my submission. I don't know if anyone else wants to, to jump in anymore, if that's sort of the end yeah, of the conversation. Yeah, I think I can top that. I okay. I can top that. Sure. Consider this. <laughs> the moon. Just the entire okay, moon. Okay, not a bad that submission. Is, that is a good one. That is the a good moon one. from Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. This horrifying, grinning face that is looming over you from the beginning of the game. And as you progress through the game's three-day cycle, it gets closer and closer and closer. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know that that moon is going to come down and crush you. And because you keep having to do the three-day cycle over and over, you keep having to deal with this creepier and creepier, progressively creepier moon. And if that weren't enough, they added it as a stage hazard to Super Smash Bros. And it can now, or Ultimate, and it can now squish you to death there, too! You can't escape. Right. You, you can't escape. You're not you're not safe. And yeah, that's a really good pick, because I don't think, as a kid, I don't think I ever spent more than about an hour on Majora's Mask oh. at, at a time because it just terrified me. I found it so stressful. It, it yeah, is stressful. The moon. the moon is, uh, okay, good. that's a good pick. It is scary. Uh, Luke, what have you brought? Okay, so I'm not, obviously I'm not as well versed with Zelda lore, mm-hmm. but mine isn't a creature, it's a specific thing, and it's in Breath of the Wild when you see that a weapon is damaged and going to break soon because I would always forget that I saw that and continue to use that weapon in the middle of a fight then it breaks on me, and I panic, and usually got killed. So your scariest Zelda monster is weapon durability. <laughs> yep. Because of the amount of times it screwed me over or got me killed. Relatable. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. I I don't know if I'd qualify that as a monster, but I'll, I'll we'll, we'll put it in there. We'll see what happens. It's a monster in my eyes. Uh, Rui, what have you got? <laughs> okay, well, it was a matter of time before this got brought up in this podcast. Um, I'm just gonna straight out. This is from the Zelda CDI games. You know those oh, masterpieces. No. Oh it, God! I've seen is those. your monster the Zelda CDI games? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a that would have been a good one, or just Phillips in general for subjecting us to this. Yeah. Um, but I'm actually going for the wizard dude. Apparently, I just googled it. He's called Guonum. Guonum. I've got no idea. I, I know. I, I know what a, you're talking about. Though. Yeah. I Guan- I watched. I watched so many YouTube poops as a kid, and for some reason, as like this dumb six-year-old left on YouTube, I genuinely had nightmares about him. I don't know what it is particularly about him, but um, 
I, I really don't know what it is. I found the CDI games sort of scary as a kid. Um, I didn't, obviously didn't play them, um, but just seeing the clips, it just, it was everything sort of off. It's it's Zelda, but not Zelda at the same time. So yeah. I'm throwing that in there. It's kind of, if, if y'all aren't familiar with the Zelda CDI games listening, um, just go ahead and I I really rec- the Game Grumps have done full playthroughs of all of them. I, I recommend checking those out, uh, which is how I experienced them. It is horrifying. What it's uh, I, I think it's you're right in saying like it is Zelda, but it's just not. It's just right on the cusp of being Zelda. But <laughs> it's but just, it's, it's it's the uncanny valley. It, it, that's it. I think that's what freaks me out about it. It's the uh, the palest of pale imitations of Zelda. Right. Okay. Is it the uncanny Death Valley? Oh. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get voting. So I guess uh, I went first, so I'll, I'll do my votes. I'm still gonna put one in for Uka, um, but like, man, ah, uh, just acknowledging the Zelda CDI games also has me scared already. So yes. I'm gonna put one in for that wizard. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right, uh, Kate. I'm gonna vote for the Moon because I'm still scared of it, and also weapon durability because it scares <laughs> me too, and I lost so many good weapons that way. Okay, uh, Luke. Uh, I will vote for the moon and for Rhiannon's one that I can't pronounce. The wizard. The wizard, that works, yes. Okay, and, uh, Rhi? Okay, um, I'm gonna vote for the titty chicken, uh, okay. Oka, and I'm also gonna vote for, um, oh, this is gonna be the decider. I'm gonna go for, it's gotta be the moon, gotta be okay. the moon. You know what? Fair enough. Stop me think... playing an entire game, so I've got to give it credit. Yeah, the moon. I love that moon. Um, I, I love. I love to see him. I love his work at destroying the world. It sounds so so nice right now. You know what? If I looked out my window like today and I saw that moon up in the sky, I would say, yeah, three days is plenty. Yeah, I mean, feels about right. I mean, I think they're probably yeah. saving that for December. You know, that's gonna be the season finale right. for twenty twenty. I think. I think that could be good. I still. I don't know. I still am wondering if Alien Invasion is going to come before or after Moon Crash. I think that's that's too so tame for twenty twenty. The entire Moon in the Hall of Fame luster. Oh Jesus! Um, maybe we'll just build the Hall of Fame around the Moon when it hits the Earth. Um, if any Good architects shout. are listening, is there any way where we can do no roof and we can fit the Moon in it? <laughs> um, maybe the Hall of Fame luster is more of a a, a concept. Oh, what if we locate the Hall of Fame luster on that moon, and that'll sort of solve the yes, solve that's the a problem. Good idea. There we I go. also feel bad for the other entries in the Hall of Fame luster having to share space with the moon, because yeah. that thing's scary. I mean, they're sharing. And, is it, and I bet it's a right diva. Oh god, yeah. Yeah. Oh my it's god. It's probably for. I mean, I'm trying. Where's to my hummus? You, yeah. yeah. Oh my it's god. one of the more uh, popular um, entries, or at least like well known. So yeah, gonna be a diva. Yeah. Sure. Sure. All right. Well, uh, everyone, please uh, bring out your uh, bring out your hammers. Uh, I think we're going to be using the uh, the big uh, metal or the big steel hammer I get, you get at the beginning, you know, of Breath of the Wild for this one. And we're going to be busting open the game. Everyone, please bring that out. All right, let's go. Um, I'm. Uh, I have a toothbrush in my room for some reason. Does that work? Yeah, you have yeah. a toothbrush? I don't know how it's ended up in there, but it has. Um, I guess. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so, uh, oh, uh-oh. Uh, looks like we're, oh, we're we're under a DDoS attack. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I just got a message from another site that I work with that we are currently under a DDoS attack. Oh, that's not ideal. That's not ideal now, um, but we will, we will carry forward with this. Um, all right, so, um... I, I think we've already kind of covered what your relationship with Zelda games is. So let's let's just go and jump into uh, Breath of the Wild. So like, what was what was everyone's like anticipation for this? Like, did you get it uh, day one? Did you go get a Switch day one? What was going on? Uh, so Luke, why don't you kick us off? So I was a bit I delayed on the Switch. I got one when Splatoon two came out. Okay, that was the first game I got with my Switch, and I later picked up Breath of the Wild. Not because of like any interest in it just because of how much people liked it obviously it was a huge success everyone loved it so i was like well everyone says this game's amazing so i guess i should check it out at least yeah yeah okay and that was kind of why i picked it up okay yeah uh Re? okay so um mine's more of a confession and sort of 
I don't, I've never actually played uh, Breath of the Wild and that's why I'm here today because I want to sort of ask you guys some questions about it and be convinced to get it. Um, my relationship with this game is that I was going to get it, it's, it's the Wii U's fault that I haven't played it. I was going to get it on Wii U because I was one of the suckers that had that. Um, and mm -hmm. then by the time, I was like, no, I'll wait until I get a Switch. Got a Switch. Um, and by that point I had too many games that I want to play like Animal Crossing. Um, and also I just part of me looks at it and I recognize it's a good game but it looks so different to the Zelda games I grew up with Majora's Mask and of everything like that um so yeah I'm really interested to see why you guys love it yeah um okay and Kate so this is yet another of those games that came out while I was still in Japan so again um I didn't I, I play some games in Japanese, but games that use a lot of their own terminology, like Zelda games, I tend to wait for, for an English release or to get in English. So I basically told my, at the time, boyfriend, now husband, and was like, hey, you know, I'll be home in a few months. Can you just wait and we'll play it together? And he predictably, in fact, did not wait. <laughs> ah, so I made, Classic. I made him re replay through the entire thing when I, pretty much as soon as I got home from Japan, it was the first game that I kind of sat down and played. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I've, uh, uh, so for me, like I, I was, uh, a little uh, like I was always gonna get a Switch. Like I, I, I've got every single Nintendo console on on day one as long as I can remember. Um, but like when this when they first showed off the Switch, I was like I was still not really like a big Zelda fan at the time. Like I I played like two or three of the games at that point, and so I was like looking at Breath of the Wild, and I was like, hmm, should I be excited for this? And then like I saw like the reviews kind of coming out and people talking about it, and like I was like, when I I think I saw one review that was like. Um, Ocarina of Time's gonna have to settle for second place, and I was like, "Oh boy, this is a big one, huh?" Bloody hell, um, that is, yeah, that's my yeah. brace. And so I was like, "You know what? I do want to switch. I'm, I'm gonna go get my Nintendo." And I woke up at uh, 3 a.m. and I went to Target on release day, and I waited in line outside. I was the the third person there, and uh, I got my Switch at uh, at 7 a.m. and it was glorious. Uh, by the way, shout out to Target because they had like a little coffee station set up, like, already, and, like, they put, like, chairs out and stuff for people. Oh, bless. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's so that sweet. That was wild. That's so sweet. Bless. Um, yeah, and they actually told people, like, as as you got there, they gave you a ticket to say, like, hey, I got here in time to get one, because they only had, like, 17 of them. Um, and so, like, yeah, that, that was that was really cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun morning. Um, then I went to class and I died. Um, <laughs> oh, but, my God. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I've uh, I, I, so Breath of the Wild was the first thing I played on the Switch, and uh, it was a magical, magical time. It has uh, become over time my possibly my my favorite game of all time. Like I've, I I think it's I think it's going to be second place. Like I've I've mentioned, like I love it so much, but like I do have a few small qualms here and there with it. Whereas, like, my other favorite, Death Stranding, I, I have no notes for Kojima. Just a, just a nice pat on the head. Good job, buddy. And, and, uh, crazy man. I have a request to it. keep give, throwing money at him and him and his actor friends so he can keep making more games. I would love them. that. I would love for him and Mads to be able to keep hanging out. Um, but, yeah, so uh, let's let's kind of dive into, like, what are... So, Re, I, I do kind of want to run this from, from your side a little bit. Like, so what are, what are some questions you have about this game, uh, not really knowing too much about it? So, um, yeah, I suppose the thing that strikes me about Breath of the Wild, based on what I do know about it, is that it looks very different. Am I right in thinking it's got a lot of voice acting? Yeah. Yeah. It, um, uh, it definitely does. And because of that, um, well, don't get me wrong, it looks like a really good game. Um, it also seemed to sort of lack the mystery, I guess, of the um, of the ones I grew up with, uh, especially Ocarina of Time. I mean, that obviously being a hardware limitation, not being able to have voice acting and everything, but that and sort of the art style, the otherworldly art style, um, very much like drew me in with that. So I guess my first question is, um, what's the overall story like when compared to the more, I suppose, mystical even earlier games on the Nintendo 64. Yeah, um 
you want to take that, anybody? Well, I haven't played any. Oh yeah, games, what are we so doing? I have no Jesus. idea. God. Um, the last about, I mean, I, one of the points you brought up was about voice acting, and while I that you are not the first person I've met who have I've spoken to who has been a little like. Yeah, a little confused or a little thrown off at the idea of a Zelda game with voice acting. I really do want to defend it. This is apparently just going to become the podcast where Kate names drops people. But I actually, um, one of my favorite convention guests who I've met several times over the course of, of the convention circuit is Jamie Mortarello, who did the ca- the voice casting for Breath of the Wild and also personally is the voice of Sidon. And he did an absolutely amazing job with a group of car- of actors who are already fans of the series, who had already played a lot of Zelda games. He insisted on members of the voice cast playing former games to kind of familiarize themselves with Zelda. And he basically said the same thing. Like, he was a lifelong Zelda fan. And he said, I was terrified with the concept of making a Zelda game with voice acting. And I tried to do the best I could to honor everything about where this series came from so that I, you were not the only one the voice actors themselves had that concern oh that's yeah that's wow. that's very interesting and reassuring to be honest it is it very much has a different tone and i will i will say that like it does not feel like playing a zelda, a zelda game in the traditional sense um and I think a lot of people say that as like, oh, it doesn't, it's like, I, I have heard so many people, this has like that Fallout 4 thing written all over it. You know, people are like, oh, Fallout 4 is a good game, but it's not a good Fallout game. And like, oh, I've heard many people say that kind of thing about, about Breath of the Wild, that it's like a, it's a great game, but it's not a good Zelda game. And I mean, to that, I say it's, it's not really a Zelda game. It is much better. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think that it does a, I think that it, everything about it is much more interesting and engaging than the traditional Zelda games, uh, even though I do love all of them. But yeah, uh, yeah, it, it has very, very little in common with past games. Really just the idea of Link and Ganon and like some of the monsters are the same. And there's like a few locations that are the same, but. Yeah, overall, it's it's a, a 100% new, like, complete, like, you know, reboot, reinvention of a very long-standing series. Um, so, yeah. I you... mean, I would argue mechanically and gameplay-wise, yes, it's very different, but story and lore-wise, I mean, I think it's full of of memories and references and, and acknowledgement that it is a Zelda game. Oh, yeah, sure, um, sure. Yeah. Even though it's handled, I mean, you get things like you have a lot of the races of characters and monsters returning, but because of the nature of the game, you see some of that expanded on. Like, you know, you 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 see the Zora being isolationist and learning like how that's resulted in them kind of suffering under the calamity um, when they can't get help with the problems they've had. You get. Um, you know, more practical explanation or examination into Gerudo society, like, you know, how does a society of all women function and, you know, how can that lead to them kind of not maybe having the best relationship with other races and how it leads to them having a horrible relationship with the Yiga clan, which is kind of a new creation that hates them. I think it gameplay, it's not a Zelda game at all, but story-wise, there's so much there. Yeah, there is there is a ton of lore, and it is part of the Zelda timeline. It takes place in the far, far future. I believe it's ten thousand years after Twilight Princess in the timeline. Yep. Um, and so th- this follows the timeline, by the way, of Ocarina of Time, then Majora's Mask, then Twilight Princess, and then it comes to Breath of the Wild. Is a really weird one because I don't know if you all know this about the Zelda timeline. There's three timelines, and Breath of the Wild merges all three of the timelines. Like, basically, no matter what happens back 10,000 years ago, this happens every single time in all three of the timelines. It's kind of a weird... I think it's a cool idea, but I think the whole Zelda timeline thing was, like, very hacked together <laughs> at all. Oh, yeah. I, I don't feel like they Nintendo sat down, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and mapped this all out in the 80s. No, they didn't. <laughs> um, no. Actually, I, I mean, Ig Anuma has, has said before, like, yeah, this was sort of an afterthought. I have the Hyrule Historia in front of me, actually, as I always do. And, <laughs> uh, Is that your Bible? Well, I mean, in a manner of speaking. And, yeah, like, the the timeline... Oh, I got it right here. Um... Yeah, the, the timeline is very strange. Like, there's... Basically, there's three things. There's, like, the hero is defeated, the hero is triumphant, 
uh, as an adult, and the hero is triumphant as a child, and that splits the timeline into three different things. Um, which is all bullshit. <laughs> um, I mean, most of these games really exist in their own vacuum with references to the other, just like kind of like Easter eggs almost. Um, anyway, we're, we're getting a little off track, but... So, one thing I think people are a little bit uh, either put off about or love about this game is that, like, this Breath of the Wild is built entirely 100% around the idea of unbounded freedom. There are no restrictions or directions or, or really anything to tell you what to do or what you should be doing. The, the only thing you should be doing is what you want to do, and you can do pretty much anything with the physics engine. Um... So, I mean, like, in a more conceptual sense, I'm interested. What does everybody think about this game? Because I, I think there's a few others, like, I mean, maybe even Minecraft might fit this description. But, like, what do you guys think about games that have, like, this this sense of unbounded freedom that have no no direction to provide? See, usually I'm not into those kind of games. Like, there's something about the recent string of open world games that I just have no interest in playing most of them. And I think it's that kind of ideology of just... Here's a big open world now, go do stuff, kind of bores me and I'm not interested in it. But Breath of the Wild managed to keep me hooked, I'm not sure how. I think maybe it's because it has a world that's actually worth exploring. <laughs> most games are just, it's a massive world, it's our biggest one yet, but we only put effort into maybe like... Oh god, spots. don't don't even get me started on that. And that's, I think that's probably... Like, like, yeah. a, a pr- like every Ubisoft <laughs> yeah. game in recent memory. See, I, I, can't think, I, I think just, Ubisoft I'm games. I'm a well-acknowledged slut for open world games. Oh yeah, I'm also I, an open world slut. <laughs> like I love every single one of those games. Like I love the Assassin's Creeds and, and Far Cries and, and obviously uh, all the Fallout games and all that I stuff. Mean, a, like I'll play literally almost anything that's open world. A few episodes ago, you were really shilling for Fallout 76, so I'm not really surprised. Uh, yeah, I am. I'll can I'll keep shilling. Yeah, there. I mean, it's a it's a really good game now. It's on Game Pass. Go try it out. I, I promise it's actually worth playing now <laughs> i've downloaded it but i haven't started it yet and every time i go into it i just think yeah i don't really like bethesda games anymore why do i even download this? come on um, so for me breath of the wild was actually the first real open world game that i played and i wasn't aware that i liked them breath of the wild is kind of how i discovered that oh, interesting. i am a slut for them which is bad because like now i'm going back and playing a lot of the ones that came before breath of the wild and i'm feeling like <laughs> a lack of these things that like breath of the wild had like all of them need a paraglider oh my like the ability to just fly not really oh, glide yeah more so than fly. that sounds the fun ability to fly around the map is amazing it got to the point where several other games uh <laughs> wild hunt <laughs> we had to install no fall damage mods because yeah. i could not <laughs> deal with it no nice. the, the thing that's so enchanting about breath of the wild first of all is that you can literally go anywhere anything you see you can yeah. go there you can climb it you can glide to it it doesn't matter what it is or where it is you can do it. So it's like and how Todd descri- described Skyrim, it's Todd but, it's Skyrim but it's actually true. But it's actually true. Yeah. Oh my god, and it's not a lie this time. The no. simple combination of climbing with a, a stamina meter that you can increase as the game goes on, depending on how much you decide to do, a paraglider which lets you fly around, and then some powers you can get to enhance its functions, and then your very simple. Um, world controlling powers like the ability to freeze objects to control ice to set bombs really they just take a few simple abilities and combine them to make you able to go anywhere yeah i mean you you can create actual perpetual flight i did it it's amazing (laughs) oh yeah no i i'm also made the flying machine out of like the minecart is that what you're talking about yes Yes. ah two minecarts you can fly forever um but yeah, like, the, the cool thing about Breath of the Wild, and the developers have talked about this too, is that, like, basically they made an open world, they made a crazy physics engine, like, crazily robust, and just gave you a few small tools, just five spells, and with those five spells, they want you to figure, they, they just want you to go crazy. Like, there is no, mm-hmm. everything that, that you see, like, you can look at these shrine skips on YouTube, but, like, basically all the stuff that you're seeing is stuff the developers never thought of. Like mm-hmm. that is that is my favorite favorite thing about video that, games. Yeah, like that's the best kind of design where yes. the players use their systems and surprise the developers. I want to say I've seen a video somewhere of somebody who managed to use that stuff in the starting area to fling themselves into Hyrule Castle. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 100%. I was I was about to ask that actually. Um, another thing I know about this game is apparently um, 
you can sort of just get to the end very quickly. Was that intentional or was that just like speed running? Yeah, you, can, speed just go, you yep. can just try and go straight to Hyrule Castle and fight. Yeah. Going and, you can without oh. doing anything else. Oh, just a, no, uh, another question um, for you guys, actually. Um, because on the subject of unbounded freedom and open worlds, my like axe to grind with them usually is that I just feel like I'm running around taking down generic enemies and it's all quite soulless yeah. and there's not much to do. So my question for you guys is... How long do you really have to walk around this open world in Breath of the Wild until you find something interesting mm. to do? My advice to you, if you are starting the game, is to finish the tutorial and then follow the quest to Kakariko Village and meet Impa and get the main quest from her and then set out in whichever direction your, your heart desires. Because that quest is really well designed to cooperate with the idea of just walking around because the main the main quest of the game is you are you have some memories like you're you're given a picture basically and it says look for this view somewhere in the world and so you just kind of look scan through the pictures and then as you're walking and you, you may see like oh wait hold on I, this looks familiar have i seen this and then you're like oh wait let me look around um and then you have a memory about something that happened in the past that informs the story um so like I would advise that's a good way to, to start moving yourself around. Um, I personally love games where they don't tell you where to go and you just kind of walk until you find something. And I think in Zelda, if you walk until you find something, I mean, it's it's pretty quick that you find something. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I don't know. So, like, I, I don't want to, like, spoil too much about the really cool things, but, like, stuff like finding, like, you know, the Lord of the Mountain and the Secret Garden and, like... Seeing, I want to actually, the, the, the two of you, Kate and, and Luke, one, one thing I like to ask people about this is like, what was your first experience with the dragons? Oh, uh, one, one swooped over my head while I was uh, hunting down, uh, I, while I was hunting down uh, cooking items in, in the rainforest area, and I, 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 I had no idea it was coming, and my husband sitting next to me laughing his head off because he knew it was coming, and it just whooshed his over my head, and I went, what the hell was that? Whoosh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember I was crossing that that bridge uh, out of uh, nearby uh, the plateau, I believe, headed towards Kakariko Village, like really near the beginning. And I was just walking, and like I just kind of glanced up in the night, and I saw this like enormous, like unbelievably large dragon, like circling above and just like twisting through the sky, and like electricity sparkling off of it, and it just kind of like sailed off into the night, and like. I was so enchanted. I like just didn't even move until it completely disappeared from view. Like the, just like I, it, it felt. I felt like awestruck. Like I had seen something divine, you know. And like mm -hmm. it, it was just like I, I think the the best thing to say about this is like that. This game is basically a collection of those moments, you know. Like that's what it is. Like the moments where you're like, I didn't know I could do that. I I didn't know that was going to be here, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Luke, what did you think about the dragons? I think the first time I saw one, I was still very early into the game. I think I'd just gotten lost and started wandering. I can't remember exactly where I was. I think I saw a dragon fly over me, and I'm still, like, wooden shield and crap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just like, I just yeah. always like, I really hope that thing doesn't attack me, because I don't stand a chance. <laughs> um, yeah, the, so one thing people say about this game a lot is that, like, and, I mean, the developers have acknowledged this, too, like, they sort of, like, sacrificed some of the story work they usually put into Zelda to focus on the gameplay for this game. And, I mean, personally, I think that worked out great for them. I think that Zelda, as a series, already has a lot of deep-seated lore and, you know, to, to lean back on without creating too much new stuff, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not to say there isn't story. No, what no, there I, definitely I is. What I like is how many, like, little moments of story you can find in places. Um, my favorite, favorite side quest is the long-running chain of you building your own town. Oh, yes. What's and it called? Recruiting people What's to called? move there. Um, Terrytown. 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 It's so good. There's a uh, there's a very long quest where you basically first build your own house and then they're like you you like this house why don't you make it your own town and then a very very flamboyantly gay architect is like let's do this and um you guys it's a really fun and stupid quest you have to go find a bunch of people in the world who have a name similar to his because those are the only people qualified to work for him what <laughs> the bolson 
construction company rules. <laughs> and that's just the that's just the company procedures. I don't know what to tell you. Is, <laughs> like, is there like? But then you finish this quest, and there's this brand new town that that wasn't there before, and you can talk to the residents, and their dialogue changes as the game goes on, ooh. and they make friends with each other yeah. and get married to each other, and you create it part like, of this world. It's so that cool. That sounds really cool, though. Yeah. Um. As I, uh, I meant to ask about the side content, actually. Is it all as bonkers as you just said? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of it is. Like, there's, it's, it still has that traditional Zelda side quest. This is bonkers thing going on for sure. <laughs> all right, like, yeah. winning me over. Um, it's working. I mean, like, even finding like, I, I remember like finding like, what's the guy's name who sells the monster parts? Um, oh God! God, I can't remember his name. Hold on, let me let me look right now here. Monster parts guy. <laughs> Kilton. <laughs> Kilton. Kilton, yes. Um, Kilton is like a weird little gremlin that has a shop that sort of just transports around the world every night. Like, it just appears somewhere random every night in the world. And, like, he'll, like, buy monster parts and sell you cool stuff. And, like, just, like, happening upon his shop one night while walking through, like, walking by, like, the Skull Lake. Like, the, the shop is just in the middle of the lake. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just random. <laughs> Nothing I can do. This is where I am. Um... But, like, yeah, I, I really think that, like, there there is a lot of cool stuff to find. There's a lot of environmental storytelling. I mean, like, ooh, I yeah. just remembered the finding the horse god, too. That was wild. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Um, I mean, I've been, like, I, I did what you, like, what you recommended to Tari and went to Kakariko, and then I went and wandered from there and, like, had no wasn't really intending to run into the main plot in any particular order. And I just have this very fond memory of um, I'm wandering through the, the wilderness, crossing this bridge, and suddenly this incredibly tall fish man is jumping down in front of me and begging me to save his people. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's God. wonderful. Just... Like, and then also uh, Muzu. We love Muzu. Uh... No, we do not love Muzu. <laughs> he sucks. We love Sidon. Uh the, yeah, there's so many lovable and endearing characters, um, and I personally, like, I love how shitty Rivali is. Like, ah, I love it. I bask in it. Um, I still mistake him for- I still call him Ravioli. Oh yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. Oh god, um, so, sorry, speaking of the characters, I've got to interject here. I know yeah. that there is a buff shark dude who- Everyone was yep, like, "That's who I was just talking." That's, about. that's the that's guy, Sidon, yeah. is it? Oh god, everyone was going crazy he... over him. It was like the weirdest year. Everyone. Oh no, the... really the... no not cra guy. It's not crazy. Everyone was thirsty. They were. Oh, everyone yeah. wanted it to was, fuck a it shark. Was real thirst. It's like everyone went from making fun. I'll admit it. Everyone was like making fun of furries. Now it's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck the shark, dude. Like, what, what was going on there? They're called fishies. Please. <laughs> Uh, he's incredibly friendly, he's incredibly supportive, has one of the best, like, character plots in the game where you yeah. really, you're helping him deal with a personal loss in his past. He's just one of the more fleshed out characters and is really tall and you get to ride him. Not <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, you do get to what? do that. Um, no, oh I'm, my I, god. I have, a third, I have a side and husband pillow, I'll admit it. <laughs> they also definitely knew what they were doing because, like, there are a lot of shots where they just, like, linger on his butt, like, a lot, you know? I need to. I'm looking uh, this dude up. Like, like, shark dude. Um, it's yeah. I was. I asked Jamie. I asked his voice actor, "What did you think of voicing the character?" And he said, "I was really nervous because he's this big shark dude, and I thought like all the fans are gonna be scared of me. You know, all the kids who play Zelda are gonna be terrified of me and hate me." And I'm like, "Oh." And uh, when did you realize that wasn't the case? And yeah. <laughs> I think oh, yeah. maybe he Very maybe good. he'd prefer fear at this point. No, no, he is the nicest guy and so supportive and interactive with Sidon fans. Okay, this is just Kate name drops. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know anybody. Uh, did I? But Sidon's yeah. voice actor is the sweetest guy in existence. He, I have this little Sidon that he signed for me that says like it's personalized and it says don't let life get you down. Prince Sidon believes in oh, you. Oh, that's so sweet. You know, it helps. It helps. Me. <laughs> Oh, wow. okay, I mean, so sorry. I feel bad. I, for, I feel bad for John Barrowman sorry. though. If he, if, if Barrowman's still watching this, he's just been one up by a by a shark dude. Yeah. Hey, John Barrowman, <laughs> please go uh, play Breath of the Wild. I, I just would love to see your thoughts on Prince Sidon. Um, <laughs> oh, that's 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 something I'll be thinking about. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
So yeah, what I, I want to sort of um, move on a little bit and, and ask about like what were your thoughts on the the lack of dungeons? Like Zelda, d- dungeons are a very very Zelda thing, and to kind of remove them was like a, a pretty big shift. I, I think like I mean, did that work for me? I loved it, but like, did that work for you? Did that not work for you? Um, I, like I said again, I haven't played originals. I will say for the record that I loved doing shrines. It was my favorite part of the game. Mm-hmm. Every time I find a new one, because I don't, I don't feel like there was ever one that had the same puzzle twice. I might have had similar ones, or sometimes variations. But I still felt like every time I went into one, I didn't look at it and meeting, be like, okay, I know how to do this. Yeah, like I had to run around, I had to experiment, I had to fail a bunch of times yes. to finally figure out what I was doing, what I needed to do. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of puzzle games nowadays are either too difficult or just really obvious so it was nice to find one that hit that balance where it was like i could walk in and kind of see what i'm supposed to do but not know how to get there and so i had to throw stuff around to figure out what it was and i feel like that's a difficult balance that a lot of games nowadays don't hit Mm -hmm. so i I, I just i had a blast going through shrine after shrine all the time I think it managed to still strike a good balance with things that, even if they aren't explicitly labeled as dungeons, are similar. Because, you mean, there's the shrines, which are smaller puzzles. You've got the Divine Beasts, which are probably the closest thing to a traditional dungeon. But then you've also got, like, infiltrating the Yiga clan hideout. You've got um, one of the shrines. I think it's a shrine. There's an area way up north of the map that's like a super dark forest with like no light in it. That kind oh, of feels yeah. like Oh my god, the dark forest. Holy shit. And then there's a horrible island. There's this awful yes. island. Yes. Oh, like, like survi- it. survival oh, island. <laughs> I hate that island. I loved I hate it. All your stuff. <laughs> It's such a great, it's such a refreshing, there's, there's so many things that are built into this game to like break up any sort of monotony you might be feeling. Like, yes. for instance, like that, the, the island we just spoke of, um, I think it's called like Tidal Island or something like that, Break Tide oh. Island. Um, but it's basically like they dump you there, Link is just naked on the beach with no weapons, and you just have to survive on this island, basically, with no way to escape. Yeah. Um, it's, it's wonderful. And like, there's also like like I said, yeah like the dark forest which was horrifying probably the scariest part of the game um, where there's no light you basically are trying to get through a dun- a forest dungeon with no light um, it's just completely so pitch black. You don't label a lot of things as X dungeon or X temple or whatever as previous Zelda games do. I feel like there are a lot of elements and places in the game that give you that dungeon feeling oh there's also three mazes among the yeah friends. oh fuck the mazes Ugh. um those feel very dungeon like um elements of the korok the korok forest can because you have to go deep into the depths of the forest to find the shrines that are located there so i didn't feel like i was missing the dungeon experience even though there weren't as many clearly labeled dungeons sure uh, okay. Um, re- re- what else are you thinking? You, gonna get- you-, you sold yet? I mean, yeah, you've done a very good job of selling me on this. Um, God, I'm trying- I had another question. Um, yes, yes. Um, so, you made- a lot of this game sounds like just sort of making your own fun, which I really like the idea of, because it sounds like there's a lot to sort of get stuck into. Um, so I suppose my final question about Breath of the Wild is if I- this sounds like a weird comparison, but if I could never get into Skyrim, will I like this? I don't think they have enough in common, honestly, okay. to tell you. Because I always got the um, impression that they sort of did. I don't know why. The uh, the only really similarity they share is being like a fantasy open world, I, I think. Um, I've never played Skyrim. Skyrim is very much an RPG, whereas Zelda is an action-adventure game that has a few RPG elements sprinkled in randomly. Um, the, uh, the There is, like, you know, you can upgrade your armor um, and stuff, and, you know, you can, like, make potions and things like that, but that's about as RPG as it gets. Um, you can, I mean, for the most part, this is a crazy, cra- this is, like, the most robust physics simulator ever made for the most part and it just happens to be like there's a bunch of stuff to 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 get to and like work around and solve um it is it is very much like i would describe it more as like an open world puzzle game than anything else oh, rather than okay. like you know, that's interesting okay it's very very puzzle focused yeah. yeah final final question 
is going to uh -huh. be, because it sounds like there's a lot to do in this game, so I want to hear from every one of you, what is your favourite aspect of it? Um, I think that the fact that you can tackle combat in literally any way you can think of, you know, like, there's stuff with, you know, you, I mean, you could, you know, obviously do the regular sword fighting, and there's, like, parrying and dodging mechanics, and you can use a shield and, and stuff, or... You can uh, use, literally, like, there's, like, dozens of different kinds of weapons that all have, like, elemental effects and stuff like that. You can, but, I mean, you can get crazy. Like, you can, you know, push boulders off of hills, or you can, like, whack boulders into the sky using stasis and ride them into the sky and then, like, plunge downwards on your enemies. You can, you know, blow up, uh, you can set bombs around them to, to blow up the crates they're sitting by and, like, distract them. You can you can like freeze enemies midair and jump on top of them if you want. Like there's there's so much there there's the way that you fight in this game is completely limited by your imagination. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah. Kind of a simple answer, but my favorite thing is the paraglider. Just the combination of this world of mm. Hyrule with the ability to fly. It it's just it's perfect. It, it makes getting around in the world so much more fun. It gives you the feeling of freedom that the developers were hoping for. It lets you try all these cool stunts. Um, the ability to, to glide and fly makes the game. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair assumption. I think that's a fair thing to say. Uh, Luke, what do you think? Uh, I think the shrines for me were hands down. I just felt like it's like I said earlier, every time I walked in, it was something different. It was something I couldn't figure out immediately. Yeah. And I felt like that game gives you the freedom to experiment and not punish you for it. Right, yeah. And at the, and at the so beginning, like you're, you're finding shrines and you say, this is a major test of strength and you just turn around immediately. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, cool. So let's jump forward a little bit. Um, so are you guys excited for Age of Calamity? I am personally extremely excited. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, I'm really excited because, like, this was, I, and Anuma even said this sort of in that direct, like, hey, you know, like, on, on Breath of the Wild, we really, like, honed in on the gameplay, and, like, so we told, like, a great story, but, like, we really want to focus in on the story this time, and, like, Hyrule Warriors, like, mechanics, like, allows us to do that, like, we're, we're, we're putting a lot of time and work into the story and, and making it really good for you, um, which is, I mean, I'm really excited because, I mean, let's all be very honest, the most exciting part of the story is, like, the story of the four champions from 100 years ago. Like, uh, the, the, the rest of, I mean, like, the stuff happening in the present is whatever, like, and, and even Link and Zelda is kind of, like, whatever, but, like, those four champions are such interesting characters, and uh, I just feel like we didn't get to spend enough time with them, so this is a, this is great. Yeah, 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 I've got, um, I mean, obviously I haven't played Breath of the Wild, but the fact that it seems, like, story-heavy enough to justify doing a whole prequel game, like, that's got me interested, definitely. Yeah, and, I mean, I think we can probably expect to see Breath of the Wild 2 next year, being that it's the 35th anniversary and the development cycle time would make sense. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I don't know, what are you guys hoping uh, to see from Breath of the Wild 2? Uh, how do you want it to be different? Well, that initial trailer kind of had a horror vibe going to mm -hmm. it, and I'm into that. If that yes, if that, they can maintain that kind of feel. I feel like I'd really, I would really enjoy that. I very much want this to be like Majora's Mask for for Breath of the Wild. You know, like take the same sort of concepts and like make it scary, make it crazy, and just like you know, like yeah, actually like put some real horror vibes into it for sure. Uh, Kate, what do you think? Um, I would like to see the appearance of the Divine Beasts being more relevant in the present and tied to that, the return of the kind of assistant characters who help you with them, because each of those had a really cool individual story that I think could be continued on. And each of them could play a, was indicated that they were going to be playing a big role in the kind of restoration and redevelopment of Hyrule. Right. And, I mean, the, the, the story of Breath of the Wild was never intended to tell the whole story because they, they were always planning on adding more DLC, and they, they said that the reason it became its own sequel is because the DLC scope became so big it had to become its own game. And so, like... And I'm not just saying that because Buff Shark, man. I'm not oh, yeah, well, <laughs> obviously we want, we want to spend more time with Sidon. It, it always I comes do, back um, to the shark husband, it seems. For me. For me, it does. <laughs> not for every Breath of the Wild fan, just for me. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I'll so let's uh, let's sort of close this out. Like I think we've we've talked a lot about why we love it. Um, is there are there any things that you don't love about this game? Weapon durability. <laughs> Now, yeah. I'm like one of the few stalwart defenders of weapon durability. I think it's a great idea, and I really do think more games should utilize it, because it forces you to be resourceful. Like, it forces you to not get too comfortable with anything you're doing, or learn too much about how anything works before you have to do something different. And I I'd love that in games. Like, that's why, like, Prey is one of my favorites of all time. Like, it, it forces you to be resourceful. It does not leave you a choice. Oh, wait, no, my least favorite I thing is that island. We need, island. we need more island. No, less island. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I understand a lot of people don't like weapon durability. I, I do think it's a great way to showcase the great variety of weapons there are without letting you become like too comfortable knowing like, oh, I'm gonna main this fucking hammer, you know, like, okay, you know. But I want to, I want to hear from Luke why he decided to make that his monster in the Hall of yeah, Fame that's monster. Actually yeah, a good Luke. So what did, does. The weapon durability not work in this game, or do you just not like it? It's a mechanic in no, general. No, I'm I'm fine with it. I just I hate it because I would always forget when something was low. It, it's an entirely a me oh. thing. Like I like <laughs> systems like that, but it's just I always forgot to remember when this thing's low. So maybe <laughs> I should be ready for it to break in combat mm. and know what I'm going to swap to next. And every goddamn time I forgot to prepare. Yeah, because I was always super confused. Because I remember everyone used to argue about weapon durability in Breath of the Wild and I was wondering whether it just wasn't implemented very well or is it just a personal thing of people not liking weapon durability? No, it's, it's, I, I, think it's... I, I personally oh. think everyone who whines about weapon durability is a big baby <laughs> and it's a good system that really helps that game. I just hate myself. You're a self-confessed self baby. <laughs> self-confessed baby is very good yep. uh yes so let's round out this discussion with uh our traditional question does this game need more or less ghosts more ghosts every game needs more ghosts more ghosts yeah no, i don't, I, I don't I, even know anything I mean, about the game but any, I'm, I'm gonna so. go with more ghosts well no there there was arguably something that could be thought of as spirits or ghosts and i would have liked to see more of them um which thing are you talking about about like the champions appearing to you in like the oh uh, yeah I, that's yeah I guess those are ghosts but it's like I want uh, like I want a Poe you know okay yeah oh yeah it could have used Poe's for sure Poe's could have been good well you want you want the red telly to be huh. I can't believe well, I, that's I'm, where I'm your so, mind... I'm so, like, shocked yeah. that that's, like, right where your mind that's went That's exactly to. what like... I was going to say. To be honest, I wasn't expecting Kate to get that. I thought only Rhi would get that. <laughs> Why would you think I wouldn't <laughs> know what a Teletubby was? Do you guys was? have Teletubbies I don't know there? if that show was yeah. in the UK, in the US It's a that. very much American <laughs> show. It's a what? very American production. No, we're production. claiming that. We're claiming that. That's we're absolutely was it's not a UK... <laughs> Hold on. With the red Teletubby face. No, I'm making sure... Can the icon be side in with the red Teletubby? I'm sorry, but I'm also wondering how I was able to so easily yeah, recall that Poe I is mean... a red Teletubby, despite not having seen the show in years. I was about, wow. I was about to what ask is, you that. The purple one is Kiki Pinky. It was instant. Was... Like it's, I heard Poe and just thought red Teletubby. Like is, is Teletubby even on anymore? I know we're going way off. It's track. still on. I, I, I think the reruns are. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. It did start in the US, but it sort of like blew up, or started in the UK. Sorry, but it like. But when it got to the U.S., it sort of became like a worldwide phenomenon. But yeah, what, it, right. you guys, I guess the the um the fucking I love dude so that vac. I still think about the elephant vacuum sometimes, and I'm like, I would love to have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen the meme that's like, um, this is what your chick, what your meat really looks like in your hamburgers and your chicken nuggets when it's being processed in the factory, and it's just a picture of the tubby custard. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh God. I don't. I don't know how we got here. We're getting out. Give me out. Um, <laughs> it's a okay. it's a telly telly podcast. You have the power to stop this conversation, right? Um. All right. So let's move on. It's time for games. So we're gonna play a little game of which one's higher. So I'm gonna list two things. Uh, one of those things is gonna be related to Zelda, and you're just gonna tell me which number is higher, and uh, I'll you know I'll I'll let you know what the answer is after that and what the numbers are. But I'm, I'm curious how, how this goes. Well, I've got a few of them here. All right, so are there more shrines in Breath of the Wild, or are there more moons in our solar system? Oh. Just in this solar system. Oh, damn. Um, 
I want to say shrines because I'm sure there's like a hundred plus shrines. I'm gonna go with with moons. I feel like we have a fair deal of moons in our solar system. Not that I've, I've counted them. There are 120 shrines in Breath of the Wild, and there are 200 moons. Ooh. Yeah, pretty bit. Why do we have so many moons? There's they a don't lot. Even do anything? The, exactly. They're just satellites. Come on. They just there. Yeah, they just stop exist. revolving. At least none of them have that terrifying face. Yeah, <laughs> that guess, is a good yeah, point. Fair oh god, imagine if every moon had a face. Imagine if this is <laughs> all just... 200 moons yeah, all have that same Majora's Mask face. God. Um. All right. I thought this one was interesting. The uh the the lowest rated Zelda. So this is on Metacritic. The lowest rated Zelda game versus the lowest rated Mario game. By lowest rated Zelda game, are you including the CDR games? Uh, no. Those are not included. Okay. So it's an official Nintendo made one. Yeah. I don't know. So, sorry, are we saying... Oh, I would say Mario, because I, like... I think it's one of the, like, sports spin-offs or, like, Olympic games or something. So you think, Zel- you think yeah. the Zelda one's higher? I feel, I feel like Zelda's got to yeah. be higher, because that's... I, I can't... I'm trying to think of a Zelda, like, massive Zelda flop, and I can't... There was only one really massive yeah. Zelda flop. It was this one, um, which was uh, Triforce Heroes. Um, oh! But, oh, but yeah. that's still at a 73, a very comfortable 73, which Wait, is far too gracious for that Hang on, game. are we saying that that Tingle spin-off actually was higher than that? I don't believe that received an official Metacritic score. <laughs> Is it the lowest scoring Mario game? The lowest scoring Mario game was Mario Sports Superstars at 62. So you were right. Zelda uh, yeah. has a whole 11 points higher the lowest game. <laughs> uh, I so, forgot Triforce Heroes existed. Yeah, you're better for it. Um, all right, so uh, let's see. Oh, speaking of Mario Sports, um, how many Mario? Okay, so how many? This is how many Zelda games are there? Not counting remakes or, or remasters. Versus Mario sports games, not and that doesn't count Mario Kart in there, just for reference. So the number of individual Zelda games versus the number of Mario sports games. Oh God, I be- there's a lot of Mario sports yeah. games. Yeah, trying to count a bunch off the top of my head. There's been a bunch of tennis games. I'm gonna go with Mario there's, there's sports a, games. Two Olympics games. I feel like there's, there's a lot. Yeah, I think Mario sports games as well. Yeah, mm. Mario Sports. It's very narrow, but there are, are 30 Zelda games, uh, not counting any of the remakes or remasters, and 27 Mario Sports games. Uh, oh! It's very close. All right, this one was very exciting for me. The, this is the last one. Um, are there more Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild or dedicated video game consoles in history? <laughs> Isn't that like 300 Korok, Korok seeds? I'm not going to tell you because that would ruin the game. <laughs> I think it's Korok seeds. Yeah. It's like 300 of them. Nine, there are 900 Korok seeds. Bloody oh, hell. Okay, I was utterly wrong about that. So yeah, it's gotta be Korok seeds. Uh, everyone agree on that? Yeah. I've been wrong on everything else so far. <laughs> yeah, but you are... You are 900 <laughs> Luke, you are confidently wrong. That's all that matters. Varen, uh... I... All right. Um. So it was. It is. It is Korok seeds. It's very close, though. There are nine hundred Korok seeds and eight hundred and eighty-eight dedicated video game consoles. Bloody oh, hell! Holy crap! Bloody hell. Yeah, there were there were a lot of them, and like, of course, we have to count like you know the the some of the standouts like the Soldier Boy Advance things like that. The Ouya. The Ouya, yeah. Uh, the uh, but yeah, there were there were a lot of the Engage. People forget that there were a lot of video game consoles in the '90s, and just because only a few of them made it big, the other ones kind of faded into obscurity. Also, the well, Engage you count to the podcast is the reason I know that there are 900 Korok seeds because I collected them all. Yes. Oh yes. Jesus! Oh, you got the golden. Oh poop. my god. I did get the golden poop. <laughs> Wait, you get they, your reward. Did you get gold, yeah, the golden poop so, is the reward for right. 900 Korok seeds. Yeah, yeah. So the Korok seeds themselves are actually little t- Korok turds, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you find these, and it's like uh, you collect all of them, and then you go to the big Korok in the forest, and he just takes That's a big it. shit into your hands, and he's like, this is what you get. That sounds like a good reward. This is what you get. Stop like collecting things in video games. Oh my god, they were they were <laughs> taking the piss with that one. That's hilarious. Oh, oh. yeah, it's incredible. It, it it sounds like that where one from the end, is it this, one of the Spider-Man movies at the end where there's a Captain America bit where he just goes, <laughs> so you sat through the critters waiting for another <laughs> That's it, that is <laughs> it. Like, yep. Yeah, I did. I'm still humping. 
Um, but yeah, that that was actually Onuma has mentioned that like they added that in as kind of like a joke to say like, hey, don't take completing video games so seriously. It's all a bunch of shit in the end. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Which is higher, the number of Korok seeds or Kate's thirst for Prince Sai? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. As someone who put 300 hours into getting the Platinum Trophy in Persona 5, yeah, <laughs> I 100% agree with that. <laughs> All right, uh, let's, uh, let's close out. Everybody head to the Wishing Well. Uh, today we're going to use my special edition Zelda collector coin that I got for being there at 3 in the morning and getting the special edition box that, that Reggie made just for What me. a flex that is. Um, that's a flex and a half. Yeah, it was, uh, they only made, like, 5,000 of them in the whole world, and I got, like, one of the two that was at that target. <laughs> um, nice. But uh, I do have the cool coin, so we're going to use that and toss it into the wishing well over our shoulders today. So um, I'm sure you guys have seen there are rumors about the, the Netflix show, um, I think Tom Holland was attached to, that are popping up, which I was, like, sort of disturbing like okay sure it could be good it definitely won't be but it could be right <laughs> i i really wish like, i had your optimism there yeah like it, it like it's possible it's physically possible for it to be good but it, it won't be i know but what? Netflix I mean, adaptations of video games have literally never been good <laughs> well castlevania is good i mean it's been a couple yeah like the castlevania series is really I'm, good i'm being um, sarcastic you're oh yeah me. yeah i've it's me uh, Dragon's Dogma just came out. I haven't watched it yet, but I read some reviews, and, like, it seems like it's really, like, problematic in that it's just, like, really shitty. Like, every episode is kind of just, like, really shitty towards women. Ooh. Um, which maybe is sort of similar to the game, I guess, so... Well, <laughs> anyway. But, uh, today I want to talk about what's everyone's, like, kind of dream scenarios for the... for a, for a Zelda TV show. Like, if you had... If one was getting made and there was nothing you could do about it, except, like, control what was going to be happening, like, maybe you can do the structuring or the cast. What, what do you guys want to see? Uh, Luke, what do you think? Uh, Gilbert Godfrey is one of the fairies. <laughs> from Alright, we're going to go ahead and move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, Link is voiced by a young, sassy actor who frequently says, Excuse me? Oh, yes. That's the only way to do this. It's the only way to do this. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, Reed, do you have any um, thoughts? I want Danny DeVito in there. Danny DeVito's got to be in it in some degree, okay. probably playing Ganon. Danny yeah. DeVito as, as, as oh, the moon. Oh, the moon, and Ganon, <laughs> and Link. Uh, God. And Zelda. And Zelda, yeah, if why not? If we're going to be, like... He's a versatile actor. If I want to be real for, like, a second, I would say, like, I think that I, I want Idris Elba to play Ganondorf, obviously. It's so easy. Um, oh, look, don't make but, us, uh, don't make uh, us as... first over Ganon as well. It's been a thirsty ass podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but like, I, I, I think that it would be, I think it could be good, like, if they put the budget into it that it needs. And like, also, they absolutely need to cast, like, unknown actors for Link and Zelda. That would be very crucial to oh, me. Oh, yeah, no, no Tom Holland um, is Link, please. Like, Tom, Tom Holland can maybe be the happy mask. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> That's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, but um, who would you have as Uku? As the oh no! Like? Ooh, Tilda Swinton. <laughs> Next. Oh god. Um. All right. Let's please, please get out of here. Please. <laughs> um, let take. I'm. I'm angry that you didn't give my Gilbert Godfrey suggestion. Yeah, just moved on. If you okay? Gilbert Godfrey's playing the fairy though. <laughs> Yeah, the one, the one that says, "Hey, oh, listen. I was, oh, I Navi, oh, I thought yeah, that's what I was thinking fairy. of." Hey, so, hey, listen, I'm hey. the parrot in Aladdin. I don't know my Zelda stuff very well. <laughs> I was really God. thinking of that, uh, that, um, that, 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 I just want to maybe I should have included this somewhere. I want to give a shout out here because like to 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 Tattle from Majora's Mask, who is maybe my favorite companion in any video game ever. Um, Tattle is like a fairy, the same species as Navi, but she's just like extremely sassy and she hates working with you. Um, and she's not helpful. Like she just kind of like every time you say like you're gonna do something, she just kind of like takes a big shit on your plans. That is true. <laughs> it's like. You're and useless. She oh yeah, she doesn't even like, want like, to help you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I like that reluctant companion thing a lot more than Navi or um, Min. Min is a great companion too. Fai is not the best. Um, anyway, but uh, yeah. So 
everyone, thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, thank you to Tom Howard for making Breath of the Wild, I guess. You did it. You, you upgraded well. Actually, um, Anuma has also said di- that Skyrim was the direct inspiration for making oh, yes. Breath of the oh, yeah. Wild. So so unironi- thank we're unironically Todd, thanking Todd um, this episode. Yeah. Genuine thanks, Todd. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can find us all at uh, GameLuster.com. Uh, we have a lot of YouTube videos coming up on our channel, YouTube.com slash GameLuster. Uh, you can find uh, me on, on Twitter at Gondizi. And, uh, yeah, so our, our guests, uh, thanks, everyone. So does anyone have any any plugs? Uh, Kate, you have any plugs today? Yeah, um, in terms of videos for GameLuster, uh, me and my husband have an ongoing series called Console Tours where – I go through the Pokemon region Sinnoh and compare it to my actual time living in its inspiration, Hokkaido, Japan. So check that out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, The the first one was really, really good. So I I recommend checking those out. Um, uh, Luke, you got anything going on? I'm hopefully going to make videos again soon. I've been a bit sluggish. I'm trying to get myself back up. Finally escape the Mackies. I finally escaped a shitty job that's been draining me for seven years, so hopefully I'm going to find that motivation to start doing stuff again. Right. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter, I just shitpost or retweet stupid things. All right. Um, is it, it's Mackie's over there, or is it... Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, Ma- we have Mackie's. Mackie's. Australia, right? They have Mackie's. Yeah, yeah. Say, I got a lot of looks Mackie's in Florida Mackie's. when okay. I said, uh, where's a Mackie's? Not a good time. Uh, Kate, what do they do in Japan? Don't they have a different thing? Uh, Maku or Makodonado. Yeah, Maku, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Hey, over here, it's Mickey oh, D's, so if anyone's wrong. curious. Which is all... Mickey D's. Mickey D's, it's fun, <laughs> Oh, dude. I feel, I feel let's unclean saying that. Mickey D's. Um, <laughs> you, don't, you don't know Mickey. Uh, all right, uh, um, Reed, do you have well, any plugs? Well, obviously I want to plug the video that um, we put up recently. The, um, yeah, your guide through yeah. Final Fantasy VII, where you 100% accurately recount the plot despite never playing it. Um, so, and then uh, you're subjecting yeah. me to the same, the same thing with, is it Kingdom Hearts soon? Oh, no, we're doing, I think we're yeah, doing we Dishonored are, aren't tomorrow. We? Yeah. So, I've got a few yeah, fun stay... ideas for that. I'm going to be putting a PowerPoint <laughs> Stay tuned together. for me, yeah, uh, yeah, guessing what Dishonored's all about, despite the fact that I know, I, I genuinely know nothing about that game, so I'm looking forward to that one. Oh yeah, it's going to be exciting. Um, all right, so, uh, I... Um, I'm now seeing that we've gone sort of the whole um, podcast uh, and me looking at this outline without seeing someone's added a, a thing at the end that says near of smells as a, <laughs> a, as a last bullet point. <laughs> I put that in like right at the start. Oh, really? Okay. I, I did not notice it until now, so congrats on the stuff. I can't help but vandalize Google Docs I'm, give, I'm given access to, so. Okay, I'll I'll give be giving you comment access <laughs> next time. Um <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, one, do I not get a last word? Oh no, no, you do. We're coming oh, yeah. back to it. I just we're, needed we're to not make a make note of smells. Oh, it's not going oh, to be Luke the last one, word. Then it could have been. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. But what could have been? Uh, Kate can still do it. No, Kate, you're better <laughs> no, than that. Quiet. You do have the last word though for winning the Hall of Fame Lister contest. So please take us out on your your signature catchphrase. Yeah. To everyone listening to this. Prince Sidon believes in all of you. Also, vote! Well, you want- you want the red telly to be?